Hi, now if you follow my channel for a while, then you know that I normally talk about products and I talk about the features and benefits that they offer. Now this video is gonna be slightly different. Uh, we sell a lot of washing machines as a company and what we find is that when we deliver it, we'll install it and on the whole, the customer's very happy with the purchase. Now sometimes you get people coming back to you and they say they're not happy with the machine. And it's not that the machine is faulty at all, it's because the new machine is different to the old machine. Now, a lot of the time, it's a case of getting used to it. So what I really want to do is I've compiled a list of things that customers comment on or complain about when they buy a, a new machine. So let's have a look. Now, just to let you know, this isn't necessarily picking on Siemens as a brand. Uh, I'm only using this as an example. Uh, the things I'm going to show you on, the, on washing machines are pretty generic across all brands. Uh, so really, I suppose the most common thing that we get complaints about are long wash times. So just here, so this is a, a cotton program, this is a colour cotton. And with this one, you can do a full load on it. So this machine has a 9 kilogram load. And on this, this will take around four and a half hours. Now this is quite an extreme at four and a half hours. If you come around to some of the other programs, three and a half, or even the standard cotton at three and a half. Uh, but this is one of the most common things that we get complaints about, uh, long wash times. And you will find that the washing performance should be better than on their old machine. So a lot of people that are coming back to us have had a machine, it could be 10, 15 years. So technology has moved on a huge amount. Uh, and what people are not realizing is that the energy efficiency really, really improves as well. Now, the main reason for longer wash times are that the, the manufacturers are under pressure to try and make the machines as energy efficient as possible. Um, and the way they do that is to, that to get it and to get a better wash performance is to have a longer wash. Um, the best way I try and describe it with customers is when you're driving down the motorway, if you're driving down the motorway at 60 miles an hour, then it's going to be a lot more efficient than if you're driving at 90 miles an hour. So clearly if you're driving at 90, then you'll get there a lot quicker, uh, but you will use a lot more fuel than if you're driving at 60. So that concept is similar in washing machines. So on here, if you've got to wash that's say around three and a half hours, then the, it, the amount of electricity is going to be a lot less than if you're doing a quicker wash. Uh, there are quick washes available. So all washing machines will have a, a kind of quick wash. So on here you've got say a 15 or 30 minute wash, but you will see it's not for a full load. It's only for say a four kilogram load. Now this is another popular brand that we do. This is Blomberg. Uh, it's a sister company to Beko. And you will find just here, there is a, an option or a feature that they really heavily promote. It's called fast full load. And what this is basically doing is this is giving the option to wash a full load in under 30 minutes. Now, although that is a fantastic feature, um, it's something that even the manufacturers themselves will recommend don't use it all the time. So don't buy the machine thinking that you can use just use that feature, so wash all the time at 30 minutes, because the performance of the wash won't be as good as it can be by using some of the longer programs. So just saying about the long wash times and how the manufacturers are under pressure to make the machines more energy efficient, and the way to tell of this is on one of these. This is the energy label. Now I have covered up which brand it is. It's not the Siemens one. And this, th these are the energy labels. And this labeling system has been around for some time. This is an old design of label. So this is gonna be phased out in 2021. And this is the new type of energy label. And you can see here that on this particular washing machine that on the old gen energy labeling system, it had an A triple plus rating. So that's very, very good. Under the new labeling system, it's going down to a C. So you can see here that manufacturers are being encouraged to try and make them more energy efficient. And it's certainly not gonna be with quick programs that they're doing this. The other thing to mention are, is this. So this is the water consumption. So on a modern washing machine, so on this particular one, this will use 45 liters of water. Now, this is another common comment or complaint that we get from customers, that the amount of water they use is a lot less. And I know that sounds a bit bizarre. Uh, if you go back, say 10, 15 years, then 
the amount of water a washing machine would use it's, it's not going to be into the 40s, uh, you're going to be looking at 70, 80, even 90 litres of water that some of these machines were using. And of course the, the dosing required for that is a lot more than nowadays. So what some customers are doing when they get their new machine, they're using the same amount of detergent that they used before in the new machine and they wonder why the performance isn't as good. That's mainly because they use, they're overdosing. So if you're comparing a machine, say 10 years ago, that was say 80 or 90 litres of water, compared to modern machines that are into the 40s, then clearly the amount of liquid or detergent you need is a lot less. So the amount of detergent required for each wash is always a very difficult one, because it really depends on the, the size of the load that you're putting in, so the amount of clothes in there, how dirty everything is, that there are several factors to come up with before you decide how much detergent you need. Uh, unfortunately a lot of people when you put in it in the machine uh, I mean some people put it into the the machine itself which isn't really right you really want to try and put it in the drawer because you don't necessarily want it straight away within the wash so I'd always recommend putting it actually in the drawer itself uh, but just to give you an idea so if you're using say bold liquid uh, that's quite a common one that people use then for a larger load machine so something like an 8 or a 9 kilogram load then they recommend using around 70 millilitres of detergent. Uh, now that, I would say, it isn't a huge amount. Uh, it's, it's quite a good amount to use. Um, what you will find is that if you're only doing a smaller load, then you don't even need that. You can go down to 30 or 40 millilitres. Unfortunately, what a lot of people will do is go, well, hang on, that doesn't look very much, and they'll just automatically pour a bit more in. Now that doesn't necessarily help, because what it does as it gets towards the end of the wash, when it's rinsing everything, then it will have to put it through an extra rinse to get rid of all the suds in the machine. Now, I know people would like to see foam within the machine, they'd like to see that it's washing properly, uh, but what you will find is if you put in too much detergent in, then it's actually counteracting what you're trying to achieve. So some of the classic signs if you're overdosing are the times of the wash take longer than you thought, so if it did say it was going to take, say, an hour on the front of the panel, if it said it was going to take an hour and it's taking longer than that, then that could mean that you put too much detergent in and what it's having to do is to go through extra rinses at the end of the program, making the time longer. A uh, couple of other things to notice that when the clothes come out, do they feel a bit odd? Do they feel either sticky or sometimes a little bit harder than normal? So did they feel a bit soapy or a bit scratchy? Um, also, do the clothes look a bit dull? Uh, that can be another sign. Or do they feel, a, a, say, a little bit musty as well? Uh, so they're all, they can be signs. It's not the definitive list, but they, they can be signs of overdosing. So I'd recommend just have a look to see the amount of detergent you're using. Um, don't necessarily use as much as you used to. Try and use a little bit less, and hopefully you should find that the performance of the wash should still be as good. Uh, there are machines out there, quite a few brands are doing it now, where you've, you've got automatic dosing machines. Uh, Bosch do something called IDOS, uh, which, is, which is a very popular concept. And what that will do is you actually load into the machine the detergent for 20 washes. And rather than you having to guess for each load, uh, it will actually take in the amount of detergent and conditioner required for that load itself. And that's a great system. Uh, first of all, it saves money on your detergent. Also, it's guaranteed not to overdose for each wash. Now, just to finish off on that, um, I did have a customer recently that wanted a machine with an extra water button. They wanted extra rinses, and that's okay, uh, because if you've got, say, a family member that suffers from things like skin allergies, then you might want to add extra rinses into the program. I did ask her why she wanted it, and the main reason was, it took a while to get it out of her, but the main reason was she wanted extra water in the machine. And it wasn't for any reason, it's because on her, all of her other machines that she's had for the last 30 or 40 years have had a lot of water in the machine. When she sees a lot of water in there, she's assuming that the performance of the machine is, is getting the clothes very clean. So what she wants to say is a lot of water going around. Of course with modern machines you don't have a huge amount of water because they're a lot more energy efficient so that's why she wanted this extra button. 
Now the next most common complaint about modern washing machines is underloading. Now a lot of people know about overloading the machine. Uh, you've always had the, the classic case where you, you put in all your clothes in and then you've just got you know, an, another shirt to go in to finish the wash so you, you're cramming it in. A lot of people have done it over the years. Now clearly the performance on the wash when you're overloading it isn't going to be that great because uh, the, the clothes haven't got room to move around. Uh, ideally when you're putting the clothes in you want to try and allow your hand to go in at the top like that. So you want to allow space within the machine and then what that does that just allows the clothes to rotate and to move around to wash properly. Now but the most common complaint now is underloading where people are only putting very very small loads and the machine isn't spinning at the end. The classic one is the bath mat. Uh, we get people that have had a new machine, they go and try something, they just want to go and wash the bath mat. Uh, it seems to be a common thing. Um, and what they're finding is it's not spinning at the end. And they're surprised why it's not happening. Now the main reason for this, a lot of modern washing machines have something called out of balance spin control. And what that will do is it will actually uh, detect the load that it's just about to spin and it will try and distribute the load around so that when it's spinning it's not jumping around all the time. Now the on a lot of older machines they wouldn't have had that and all that happens when it's spinning it's vibrating quite a lot uh, but with modern washing machines you've got this newer technology and if you only put in say one or two items in then it can't distribute the load so what we recommend is trying to make up the load. Sometimes putting three or four items in can really help. And what this can do, it just allows the ability to distribute the load around the machine and then it can spin evenly. So the next common complaint we get about modern machines is the lack of programs on a machine where you can do a full load. Now this is quite a high-end machine. This is one of our most popular washing machines that we sell. Um, and you can see here that we've got the benefits that you can see when you've got the door open it's giving you the information as to the load that you can put in so on these three programs uh, the, you have got the ability to put a 9 kilogram load in here as you move around to some of these other programs then despite that taking say two and a half hours you can only put a 4 kilogram load in delicates and silks so on that one that's only a 2 kilogram so on quite a lot of these other programs then you can only put a fraction of the load in so you're only looking around half a load um, and as I mentioned earlier things like the, the rapid programs uh, on this you've only got four kilograms as well so that's a common um, complaint or comment that people come up with that you, you've only got a handful of programs that you can do a full load on and they do tend to be the longer ones as well now another comment that we get on modern washing machines are that they're too complicated and there's too many programs. So I'll just show you this. This is a, a Bosch washing machine. Uh, this is one of their Series 6 models. So this is towards the higher end of the, the range that they offer. And admittedly, when you first look at this display, I mean, it's a fantastic display. It's actually a, a touch screen display. Uh, so there is a huge amount you can do with it. Uh, but people looking at the machine, they just get confused and they get put off because there's so much to it. Once you actually start using it, it's actually very easy to use. Uh, but this is something, especially when people are looking in a showroom, they'll look along the, the, the rows of washing machines, and when we switch this one on, they might get put off because they think it's too complicated. Now the main comment about too many programs are that the majority of people tend to use, say, two or three programs nowadays, but the two or three programs that you use will be different to the next customer to the next customer. So yes, people are using two or three programs, but they're not necessarily the same two or three programs. So over the years, programs have changed a lot. Uh, if you go back, say, 10, 15 years, then you will have had things like cotton program and synthetics, whereas nowadays, although you have got the cotton program, you've got dedicated programs uh, for things like shirts programs, you've got sportswear, so because people are washing at much lower temperatures, say 20 or 30 degrees, then the machine itself isn't getting cleaned all the time. So when you're washing at say your, your 40 or your 60 degree programs, which was fairly common, um, then it's getting the machine a lot cleaner. 
so what manufacturers had to do now is they've had to put things like this on. This is a drum clean program. It's a program that takes around an hour. And what this is designed to do, this will get up to a high temperature and it's just really designed to clean the drum and to clean everything inside. Now one of the final things that we get a lot of comments on about modern washing machines are the size of them. So things like the, the width are pretty standard at around 60 centimetres, the height are pretty standard at around 85 centimetres, but the depth of modern washing machines uh, can be quite a bit deeper than a lot of older machines. And the main reason, if you go back 10-15 years, then the majority of people were washing at say 5 or 6 kilogram uh, load washing machines. Nowadays people want bigger loads and that's really what is driving it so a lot of manufacturers are offering bigger load machines. So you're looking at 8, 9, 10, even 11 kilogram domestic machines, not even commercial ones. And clearly if you're keeping the, the width and the height standard then the, the machine, the, the drum has to go somewhere so it's going to be into the depth of the machine. So whereas say a machine say 10, 15 years ago could have been say 50 or 53 centimetres deep, a lot of modern washing machines are going into around 60 centimetres. And it's something we, we always mention to customers to just have a measure before you buy the machine because there's nothing worse than getting the machine there and then you realise realizing it's too deep. Now for some people that's not really an issue. If it sticks out a little bit it doesn't matter. Uh, but if you have got, if it's in, in quite a small say a galley kitchen where you've got drawers next to it then you might not be able to open the drawers. So I hope you enjoyed that quick video. Uh, I know it's something a little bit different um, just coming up with the comments or complaints that people are coming up with when buying a, a modern washing machine. So not necessarily that the product is faulty, it's just that people are not getting used to how technology has moved on. Uh, a lot of people that we're dealing with um, could be the older generation and sometimes if they've been washing for, for several decades then they get set in the ways. Um, so all I'd ask is please give me a thumbs up, click subscribe on my YouTube channel and leave any comments below. If you think I have missed something, because I'm sure there's a lot of other things that I have missed um, when dealing with modern washing machines, then put it in the comments. Also, if you have got any questions on modern washing machines, then put it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.